Good evening. Welcome to Politically Incorrect. Let me introduce you to our panel over here. Mr. Adam Goldberg, fine actor. Loved you in Private Ryan, of course. Now you're in that big hit movie, A Beautiful Mind. Good for you. Charmaine Yost, columnist, political commentator, professor of politics and family at the University of Virginia. Welcome back. Bishop John Spong, here is your book, A New Christianity for a New World. You are, of course, an author, a lecturer, and a retired bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Newark. And Victoria Jackson, you are not all that, but you are certainly one of my favorite comedians and actresses. Uh, you are the Dorothy Lamore. When I go on the road with this show, you all remember from SNL. How about a hand for this panel? And Dor who's Dorothy Lamour? <laughs> She's another generation. <laughs> yeah, she was Bob Hope and Bing Crosby's uh, Gal Friday. Thank you. Back when they had those. All right, uh, <laughs> switching subjects to the first one. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it, but last week the first U.S. service woman uh, lost her life uh, over there. I think it was in Pakistan in, a, in an accident with a plane. Um, now, it has sparked a bit of a debate, as it always does, when a woman loses her life in service of our country in the armed forces, because some people say, well, what are they doing there anyway? Um, the Israelis used women in the armed forces in combat for a while, and then they stopped, uh, because it is, of course, a unique sort of thing to be in the army. It's not like any other job. It's not a jobs program. It's not about being fair. It's about killing people who want to hurt us and take our stuff. Exactly. <laughs> but is the idea that they're not physically equipped, is that the argument against well, having Well, are they as physically equipped? I, I, I mean, I've I mean, been to the gym, and plenty of times I've been out aerobicized by, by, uh, <laughs> by women who don't smoke nearly as much as I do, and I, okay. I certainly am not equipped to, to be in, in combat. But you know, well, it's interesting. We've got the Olympics coming up, and you look at that and you think, well, how come we still have men in their events and women in their events? And the reason is <laughs> that your average guy is bigger, stronger, tougher, than your average woman. And that's really, you know, you're right. There are individual women, and, and, you know, God bless this woman who lost her life. There are individual women who can compete, but the average guy still is a lot stronger, and it's just not right to send well, that women out of That was a wonderful argument combat. back in the days when it was physical strength, but when you're pulling a trigger, anybody can pull a trigger. You can no, drive a tank, anybody can drive a tank. that's not entirely true, though. And please at least know that I'm the father of a captain in the United States Marine Corps, and her name is Rachel. And she is, wow. she is, a, she is a, an attack helicopter pilot, and she's battle ready, and she was ready to be sent into combat. And I believe if you're going to have equality, it's got to be everywhere. It can't be a little bit of equality here, a little bit of equality there. It's got to be across the board. Well, I think that if you want to win the war, like if you want to win a basketball game, you pick Michael Jordan on your team, not me. Well, right, but it's not, I don't think it's a... If you want to win the yeah, but, war... But, you didn't, but, but you're, you didn't go into the army. I mean, you got to say, any woman in this country, it's a pretty soft civilian country we have, any woman who chooses it doesn't have to, to be there. as many women as men. It can but be they the women really want to be there. I mean, <laughs> if you're a woman and you join the army, you really want to be a soldier. If you're equipped to do it, you're equipped to do it. If, okay. if they would compete, if they were equal, if you had equal yeah. standards and they were trained and could compete with the men, the problem is all across the board they have brought the standards down for the women so that they do not compete on an equal right. playing field with the men. That's my daughter. No, I mean, she went even, through the same no, Marine Corps basic no, training no, everybody no, else no, went no, through. No, no, she did not. She did not. She had to the pass Marines, every test. The Marines are the only service who trains their they, men and they women train separately. Them separately but and the, the women standards do not the meet same. the same standards as the men. They would, do not. Well, you know what? The standards may be the same, but they also have lowered standards in the name of political correctness in the name of making it equal mm -hmm. so that the women could compete. Right. Well, that's, so, that's da dangerous. And I, I think, think that men, is dangerous. men have testosterone. They start beating each other up when they're five. And <laughs> men should be the president. Men should be preachers. Men should be cops. Women should not be cops. I know plenty of women with testosterone. Wow. and I, I, see, I seem to <laughs> have gone out with them uh, all. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I, I beg to differ. Wait, wait a second. Men, w a woman should not be president? No. Why shouldn't a... And I also think whoa, that whoa, the whoa. woman what? is secretly running the country through the husband. Just like in my home, 
My husband's a cop, and he has guns and muscles, but I'm secretly running the home. <laughs> Why should a woman not be president? I don't understand that. I, that is I just not a... like the whole men leadership thing, and, and I don't like gender blending, and I just... <laughs> I don't like men and women becoming the same. Like the way I love it. No, this, is, this is actually very interesting because a lot of feminists make the argument that we will never have a woman president until we have women in combat. And see, I, I actually disagree with you. I, I think it would be a good idea to have a woman president, but we've got, we have plenty of examples of women leader, leaders like Margaret Thatcher and Indira Gandhi who, right. who, who did not serve in the military. So, and who were just as big bastards as any man who ever <laughs> yeah. led. I mean, Equality, this whole, Bill. Oh, come on. I mean, this whole idea that, you know, if women ran the world, we wouldn't have wars. <laughs> Every time a woman gets to a point of power, they become much more like the men. They don't feminize the office. The office makes them as tough as the men. I mean, in, you mentioned Indira Gandhi, uh, Thatcher, uh, Golda Meir. And well, no, you're, you're exactly right about that. But a really important point that I want to address that you brought up is that we do still need physical strength in our military. It's not just push-button war. And this war, of all wars, yeah. should illustrate that. You've got, this war is being fought by special forces, and they do not let women in the special forces simply because they cannot compete on that, that playing field because it takes so much strength. But yeah. it's not a sexual issue, then. It's, it's about who's, who's equipped exactly. and who isn't. So exactly. I think, you know, if, you know, but who, who, who's if who's you ever were right in the, the World uh, Trade Towers, would you rather have a man carrying you down the steps or, or a woman? Whoever could physically right. carry me down the stairs. I wouldn't, well, wouldn't really well, care that if it was a man or a woman. <laughs> if the building's collapsing. Well, come on. Who is that more often than that? It, it's, it, it is, and I'm telling you, I may, I may, may hang out some, with some weird chicks, I guess. Because I, cause they, they're flipping me around the, you know, house. And I, uh, but it is. It is sort of too personal. analogous, whoever brought up the... The sports thing. It's like the WNBA. People pretend <laughs> it's as entertaining. Well, that's a painful thing to watch, I have to admit. Right. It is a pain. <laughs> that's right. A it's that's, that's <laughs> it. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I uh, mean, uh, girls cannot yeah. play sports anywhere near to the level men can, period. They just can't. Well, okay. Well, I, I, have to, I have to rise to the defense of my gender. They, they play, I, for women, they, for they women. are fantastic. But right. I will agree with you that we don't see any women out in the NFL. That's because people understand that football is tough and it's hard. And it's like, this is why I like Saving Private Ryan so much, is that even though it was painful to sit through and I almost didn't want to be there, but people have this sign of schmaltzy idea of war and this romanticized idea. But do you realize how lonely people that shoe was with no women? I mean, there was, we, <laughs> there was a female extra of one day and we all went completely insane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it really, I think, would have helped the morale of the and cast, that's the anyway. and that's the only thing I can relate to in, in, in terms of battle. But. You know what, though? That raises another issue, and, and I think this is one of the most interesting things about women in combat, is that Anna Simons, who teaches at one of the Naval War Colleges, wrote that one of the most damaging things about putting women into combat is it's not just their presence that destroys the camaraderie amongst the men, but it's also the fact that women are not absent. When men are dying on the battlefield, they're calling out for their mothers. And, and why? It's because you have to have an ideal. You have to have something that still represents humanity um, when you are sacrificing your humanity to protect your country. And, th and that's part of what women do by not being there, is that they represent what it is that we're fighting for. Wow. I was half with you, but I don't buy that. I don't either. And what is it? Because they yell out for their mommies, there shouldn't be women in the army? <laughs> it's that... It's you the, had me, babe, but that's the, whack. Okay, look at no, it. <laughs> I gotta take a break. I'm sorry. We're a little over time. Well, I hate to start off with sad news, but Mariah Carey was uh, dropped by her record label.